radius. So okay. pulling the radius. He's pulling the radius. So where, where the action is taking place is the insertion. Usually, the origin, where it's coming from, is usually stationary, which means there is no action taking place there. Does that make sense? If you, because if you're going to flex your elbow, do you move your shoulder? No. no. Because if you move your shoulder, can you flex it? No. Okay, so try and move your arms, flex. Try and move and flex. Move the shoulder there, try to flex. It's not really possible. Well, some might be able to, but when the shoulders are stationary, it's much easier was to flex. So where it's coming from, it is the origin, which is usually stationary. Okay? So it's like giving it the support to be able to carry out the action. The action is where it's actually going to make, I mean, the insertion is actually where it's going to produce the action. Okay? So we have the origins. These are a whole lot of the origins. All right? Look at the, the, uh, the triceps on the back. It's coming. Some is coming from area of the scapula. Okay? Some is coming from the humerus. All right? The attendance is getting attached towards the ulna. To ulna. Okay? So if I need to flex, I'm using what's the biceps. Okay? I'm using the biceps and some of the brachialis. So I'm able to flex my elbows. Okay? But if I need to relax the elbow, this is going to relax its action, then this one is going to pull back the triceps. Contraction, relaxation. Contraction, relaxation. Okay? So the origin, where it's stationary, where the muscle is coming from, the belly, it is between the origin and insertion. This is where the contraction, the shopping. Because if you look at my muscle, if you touch it, if you touch it, it's, it's, it's soft right now. But by the time it's contracted, you're going to see it's getting bulkier. The bulkiness is actually is shortening or it's contracting to pull this elbow. Okay? So very important. Pull this elbow, very important. Right? Okay. Now, understanding muscles and all that is very important. Okay? How their names and all that is very important. So, the homework that I gave you guys, which is the lap points, you guys can notice that it's visually muscle and skeletal because it's very important for you guys to understand it. Then the connect homework also has drag and pull and all that. What are going to help? Okay? So usually that's the ability to mess with the leg because we cannot learn all of the 600 muscles in class. Okay? I'm going to point you to the direction for you. Doing those homework. For them to help you guys. Okay? Alright. So there are ways that we, we name based on uh, the muscle or wherever it is, what it's attaching to, and all that. Okay? So very important. Alright, so the action, as I said, the action produces the effects. Alright? It produces an effect. Now, there are four ways through which a muscle can produce an action. Or four categories of muscle action. Alright? Number one, we have what we call the prime mover. The prime mover. Number two, synergist, antagonist, and fixator. Okay? Four ways, or four categories of what? Of muscle action. Four categories of muscle action. All right. The prime movers, we also call it agonists. Prime mover. Prime movers. We also call it agonists. Now, this word agonists, I know, I know everybody's going to take pharmacology here because I think we only have a nursing and uh, like, so you take. You guys going to do pharmacology. All right. You're going to keep hearing this word. Okay? In pharmacology, that is what we call agonists and that is what we call antagonists. Agonists, they're usually anything that is going to bring up an action. Antagonist is anything that is going to work block an action. Okay, so in pharmacology we have medications that we use to bring up an action. We have medication that we use to what to block an action. Okay, so yeah, to block. So it, it is just like a, why it brings an action. Okay, what happens if somebody is having like a, 
running rules and all that. What is the usual, what is, what is one of the medication that we usually give? Anti-histamine or Benadryl, right? Yeah, okay, it's to try, that's the word, to try, okay, exactly. So it's blocking the secretions. Okay, that's an example. Or if somebody is having like a, 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 a yeah, it's allergic reaction, exactly. So stop it, to block it, right? Or if somebody is having like a, say, uh, arrhythmias, 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 which is abnormal heartbeats. Because the normal heartbeat is between 60 to 100, 100 beats per minute. So if it's greater than 100, we call it tachycardia, greater than 100. It's called tachycardia, tachycardia. Okay, if it's less than 60, we call it bradycardia, bradycardia. So if somebody is having an heart rate, say like 150 mm. beats per minute, that's not good because it's not mm. giving the, the heart's time to receive blood and to push it up. So we have to slow the heart rate down. So we use what we call a beta blockers, blockers, beta blockers, okay? So just keep in mind, you're gonna keep hearing this agonists and antagonists in your pharmacology plans, okay? All right, so for the muscles, so the prime mover is what we call agonists which means they produce most of the force during what a particular joint action. They are the ones that are responsible for a lot of the work. It's just like, if we're gonna move this, this table, okay, um, from the areas, say, oh yeah, I got it. You sure? All right, she's trying, she's trying. Oh, <laughs> I told you, you cannot move it, see. I'm more muscular, I can move it. Then she just put the hands in there. Okay, sorry, let's move it. Then with my own action, because I got a whole lot of muscles, I move the whole thing. She's just using his hand, our hand to support it, right? But again, she's still contributing. So who is doing the most work? <laughs> Why she's just doing the less? <laughs> the less work. So I am what? The prime mover. I am the prime mover. Okay? She's going to be what? A synergist. A synergist aids the prime mover. You guys get it? So I'm the one that is, you know, I've got the muscles and all that. But she, in, 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 in the first instance, she said, don't worry, doctor, I got it. Is you sure? No, you don't got it. So she saw that I moved it. So she just helped me. So she's the synergist. So we have muscles that they are the ones that are producing the action primarily. Why some are just helping? The ones that are helping are what we call synergies. They contribute. So they produce additional force. Or sometimes they can modify the direction of the movements. Or sometimes they can help to stabilize. But they are not the main person doing it. Okay? The synergies. All right. Antagonist. Antagonist is of the opposite. What is the antagonist? Remember we said they are blocking. They oppose the prime movement. Which is very important. Why? Because they prevent excessive movements of the prime mover. For instance, if I'm going to flex, that is an extent that I can flex. Why? Because this is going to prevent it. But what about if there is a problem with my tendon of the triceps, which means I can literally bend up, collapse it too? I know, we know, I know there are a couple of us that can do that. They have what's a flexible tendon. They can literally take their hand, squeezes all through mm -hmm. their legs, to the back, you know, their hands, hands, it. <laughs> hands on their neck, okay? They have the flexible joints. But ordinarily, the antagonists prevent excessive movements, okay? And sometimes, they relax, so that, you know what? Go ahead, do it. So it's just like, if we are moving it, all of a sudden, from the air, and just, she is not, I cannot do this, doctor, you gotta go ahead. Um, so, can a muscle be both a prime mover and an antagonist if it's the bones and muscles moving in the opposite direction? Then? It, 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 it depends. It depends on the direction. Well, usually, if you're, if you're going like, like this, mm -hmm. the, the, the bicep will be the prime mover, the tricep will be the antagonist, but then when you go in the other direction, which is it, does that then make the tricep? All right, okay. No, you're, you're talking about agonists and antagonists right now. And that's the scenario you're giving me. 
Yeah, the prime mover agonist versus the antagonist. Okay. Well, antagonist mean, opposes. They oppose the prime mover, right? But I'm, yeah, if you're going in the opposite direction to pull something down, then, then it's if you're pulling something down, like going into extension in the yeah. flex state, pulling into extension, this is the one that is walking. That's the prime mover. That's that's the, the, okay. Now remember, we have some muscles here. Okay, part of it is what well, it's the triceps. Let's see. So we got the extensors, which are what triceps. Which are, we have a tricep breaker, longer than lateral head. Those are the ones that are what that are extending. So those are those are the prime movers, all right? So when they are doing their work, this one relaxes. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, because it's a reverse action. So then they reverse roles the antagonist. And yes, the agonist, right? yes. Depending on the action, exactly. Depending on the action. Yeah. Because if I'm extending this, this is going to relax. So, so that every muscle is always an agonist and not every muscle is only because they can reverse role depending on the action. No, I don't want to say that they can reverse role. I think uh, because it depends on the action. If they are extended, it's a different action from flexing. Does that make sense? Yeah. So because if I'm flexing, is it hang on one second? So if I'm flexing, that's a different action to extend it. So if I'm flexing, this one is one that I'm using with the bicep. Well, they're all 